and the hope set before us. So I'm not going to continue on there, but I just wanted to show you, you know, the oath, the promise, the, the swearing all being kind of used interchangeably here in Hebrews chapter 6. And even just what, you know, the kind of context of what it's talking about, in, in hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began, Titus chapter 1. Um, God's promise to us, we're relying on his word. Words are important. We need to be careful with the oaths, the vows, the promises that we make. So if you've decided to make an oath or a vow or a promise this year, understand that, you know, if you've, if you've spoken those things or said those as a vow, as a promise, as a testimony of swearing, you know, now you need to keep that. And that's going to impact, you know, what other people are going to be able to even believe you. And, you know, there's, there's a lot of ramifications for this. I don't want to get into all of them too quick um, about not keeping your word. But one, another big one, and especially I see this a lot, and I see this a lot, not just, uh, you know, with other people, but even in our own home having children. It's very important that you keep your word in front of your children. And if they're going to respect you and listen to you, and if you have a problem with your children, uh, parents, not respecting you or not listening to you when you tell them to do something or whatever, you know, where they're not being very obedient, they're kind of just not caring at all about what you say. Examine how you speak to them and the things that you say and if you follow through. Because what happens very often times is that parents will start threatening kids. Well, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that and I'm... Don't, you know, if you do that again, I'm going to do this. But then it doesn't happen. And the reason why, I understand there's lots of reasons why. The reason why is because, one, you don't really want to punish your child, right? You want to try to keep the peace. You don't want to have to do something. It would be ni a lot nicer if you could just have them obey you just by you using words and not have to discipline them. But I'm telling you, it's going gonna, it's gonna to backfire on you if you don't follow through on what you say. And, and I'm willing to admit, I think, you know, we're all probably guilt, guilty of this to some extent, but we, that's why we need to keep these things in mind and think about it so that when you, the words come out of your mouth, you can stay true to those words and, and, you know, that way they know, well, you know, how do they know dad's serious? How do they know mom's serious? Well, they should know that you're serious because the words came out of your mouth. The more evidence you give them that, well, what they say doesn't really happen, that's how they're going to act. So if they only know dad's serious when he starts hollering and yelling, then they're going to start obeying. Then that's what they're going to wait until for you to start doing before they're actually going to take you seriously. But if you could teach them, no, when I say it, I mean it, and whatever I say is going to happen. When you don't do this, this is going to happen, and then you could just deal with it, be true to your word, and which is also, you know, don't start saying things that you're not going to do and you don't intend, right? So don't start, don't start threatening your kids with a punishment saying, oh, well, if you, do, if you don't do this or if you do this, I'm going to, you're never going to have that again, or I'm going to take this away forever, or I'm, you know, if you're going to say something like that, then do it. Because again, you're gonna you're gonna shoot your own testimony, your own credibility in your kids' eyes, if you keep if you flip flop and go back and forth and 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 start uh, changing your punishments or changing what you say, they won't believe you. And not just with kids, but I mean, obviously, you can apply that to anything. You can apply that with anybody, you know. And especially as a believer, we want to be able to have a good testimony of Jesus Christ and be able to tell people, hey. You know, this is what I believe. I think this is wrong, and this is right, and this is wrong, and this is what the Bible says. And when they look at you, hopefully they're not going to see or hear a lot of contradictory things where it's like, well, wait, you say you believe the Bible, but you're drinking and smoking and fornicating, and, you know, it's like, it's like I don't even know the Bible that well, and I know the Bible teaches against that. You want me to listen to you and, believe, and, and trust you? It, while you're telling me here that Jesus is going to save me, why should I listen to you, right? And why would you? You don't want to listen to hypocrites. We want to have a good testimony. And when we honestly believe these things, you know, we're, we're trusting in the word of God. 
we need to have that good testimony even through our life and through our actions as well as through our words. But